Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am talking all things email marketing with Liz Wilcox. She is truly the queen of email marketing. And I am so excited for this conversation because you all know how passionate I am about email marketing being such an important tactic to use in your business. So with that being said, Liz, welcome into the podcast. Hey friends, I'm so excited and y'all, I am just thrilled that Amy is excited about email because a lot of times, honestly, guys, can I tell this, uh, some hosts before you hit record, they'll be like, okay, I'm having you on the show, but really, I just need you to sell me on email because I hate it. And I'm actually going on someone's show. They invited me for the second time. They're like, I've never had a repeat guest, but I can't stop thinking about email marketing for the last year can you come back on? I have something else to share. So I'm excited that Amy's already sold. You know, Liz Wilcox has already sold and we're about to sell you on this because it really is so amazing. So I'm ready to go, Amy. Yay, let's dive in. So before we do, tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and who you serve. Yeah, so obviously I'm an email marketer. Uh, Some people call me the fresh princess of email um, because I love all things 90s and I love to give a fresh take on email. And one of the reasons I was so thrilled to come talk to Amy and talk to you is because I'm also a mom and I started off as an RV travel blogger. So y'all, I was living in about 200 square feet with a toddler and limited internet. So when I was starting my business, you know, I was listening to all these coaches and listening to podcasts and, you know, they're, they're giving strategies for people. I don't, I don't know, like stay at home, like wives that don't have a job or children. And I'm like, I don't have time for 20 steps. I have time for maybe two steps before the toddler wakes up and I gotta, you know, do the dishes. Right. And so maybe you can relate to that. And so I was like, okay, this email thing, everybody says, this is the thing. This is, you know, the most bang for your buck. So I said, okay, well, I, I know how to write. I know, you know, I graduated high school. I can write. And so I said, okay, that's the one thing I'm going to focus on. And ta freaking da, I ended up getting really good at it. People were right. People like Amy were right. Email did work. I ended up uh, creating my own book because people said, oh, sell to your list. I had nothing to sell. So I had to create something sell to your list. And I ended up writing a book. And I think moms will particularly find this funny. It was a book about poop. (laughs) Um, So not not something we shy away from here on this podcast, I'm sure. Um, And it sold like hotcakes. It made like $7,000 in the first few months. It got picked up by an international sponsor. um, And it was all because of the power of email. And, you know, I did it again and again. I sold more and more things. And Then I got other people like me saying, you know, Liz, you're a blogger, but you don't actually blog. How are you making money? I said, email, baby, email. And that's when I realized that I needed to sell that business and go all in on teaching other people emails, especially, you know, people like you and me, where moms, we don't have a lot of time, but we do have a lot of ambition. We can get some things done when we know it's important, right? And so I wanted to you know, teach people just how simple email can be so you can get it done and get back to what really matters. Yes. Yes. You said something there that really resonates. So many people overcomplicate it. We're overcomplicating the whole email piece. What's your advice for that woman that's like, okay, I I know, I hear what you're saying, but I'm busy and I don't even know where to start. Totally. So if you've listened to other podcasts or you Google email marketing, it seems complicated because people want to sell you high ticket services. Okay. That's a sales tactic. Email really isn't that complicated. Okay. Um, What I would say is number one, 
take a deep breath, mama. You totally got this. Like I said, you know, I graduated high school. That's my qualification for sending an email. I can do this and so can you. Um, and then just remind yourself that email is all about connection, right? And that's something especially moms want to do. We we need to connect, right? Email was sort of my outlet in, you know, getting rid of social media, getting rid of that headache over there, getting rid of that comparison, and just writing to people that I knew wanted to hear from me, right? They consent. Email works because it's consent-based. They opted in to hear from you. So keep that in the forefront of your mind and just send a newsletter with a quick personal update. This is exactly how I want you to write your newsletters. So a quick personal update. This is a sentence, maybe two sentences of something you did since the last time you emailed. You know, I was on a podcast. I changed 372 diapers. I, uh, you know, missed car line and my kid was ticked off at me again. <laughs> you know, whatever it is. And it's a personal update. Notice I'm not telling you to tell a story. You don't have time to write a story. Your people don't have time to read a story, okay? It's a newsletter, not a novel. So a quick personal update, and then just segue into whatever content you have for them. So if you're a podcast host, hey, this is my new podcast. If you're a blogger, hey, this is my new post. If you just, you know, got crazy on TikTok and made five last week, hey, here's, you know, here's my new series over on TikTok. Whatever it is you actually want to promote, just promote it. So to recap, just take a deep breath, realize, hey, these people are on your list because they said they wanted to hear from you and just write a quick personal update and segue into whatever content you have and then sign off until next week, whatever. Super yes. simple. Yes, exactly. I love how you phrase that. You're writing a newsletter, not a novel, right? Because so many of us are like, comparing ourselves to these gurus out there that they aren't even writing their emails. They have a whole team writing their emails. So why the heck are we comparing ourselves to someone else? And honestly, that's when I have my highest open rates or when I just give a quick little blurb. Like last week I sent out an email. Guess what? I almost burnt my business down. Here's what happened. You know, just this like quick little snippet showing the reality of life. People are curious. Even like you said, you know, something as simple as, you know what? I was up to my elbows and poop the other day. It's relatable and people connect with that. So I love how you've really simplified this because it can be so daunting. But the thing is with email marketing, these are people that have already opted in. So these are already your warm leads. So how can we leverage these warm leads then to convert them into sales, but in a way that's not like spammy? Because we've all been there where we get these emails where it's just buy from me, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. Yeah. So don't do that. Uh, you know, you've got to set expectations. So I, I call it the email staircase. So I want you to think about email and how you're going to turn these warm leads into customers as such. So first you have a follower, then you get them on your list and you turn them into a friend. And once you have a list full of friends, you can have a list full of customers. So the email staircase, again, is follower, friend, customer. Um, super simple. I know you're probably driving or maybe, you know, walking the kid in the stroller. You, you don't even have to write that down. Follower, friend, customer. So you're getting people on your list. How do you turn them into a friend? How do you, you know, get it so that these people will buy from you? So when it comes to a friendship in the inbox and, you know, pretty much anywhere, you just got to do th three things. Number one, show you're invested in them. So even just emailing regularly shows that you're invested. Uh, share that, you know, it, it took me two hours to write this blog post. You might think nobody cares, but just like Amy said, it's relatable. You know, this is the way we connect. So no one is going to invest into you without you investing back into them first, right? So show you're invested. Hey, I spent two hours writing this blog post. Or, you know, if you are, uh, let's see, you try to help people draw better, right? Like, hey, I just, you know, learned this new technique to pass it on to you, right? That shows that you're invested in helping them with this vision, right? You're going to be a better artist. 
Um, for me, I attend a lot of webinars that would bore you to tears to learn about email deliverability. So you don't have to, because I'm invested in you making money with email, right? So number one, show you're invested. Number two, share in a relatable way. We already talked about that within the newsletter framework we shared at the beginning, right? So again, like the word here is relatable, share in a relatable way. Amy said it, right? We don't want to try to be interesting. Let's leave that up to, you know, pop culture, right? Those people are interesting. Actors, actresses, like, uh, you know, even if we hate them, it's fascinating, right? Don't try to be interesting. Just try to be relatable. That book about poop I wrote, it was like a collection of crappy RV stories. You know, you go on Instagram, it's hashtag RV life, you know, the Grand Canyon, Banff National Park. I was like, that's not actually RV life. I can't relate to that. Actually, RV life tends to be sort of crappy, if you know what I'm saying. So that's incredibly relatable. And that's why that book did so well. So just try to share in a relatable way. That's also why I suggest, you know, two to three sentences, personal update. You know, I locked my keys in my car. I'm at my grandma's house and she has this stuffed bird that's creeping me out. That's incredibly relatable, right? Is it interesting? Is it a long convoluted story? Probably not, but it's relatable. So we connect with it. And the third thing is just to stay top of mind. And this might be the scary part. Like, oh no, I can't email once a day. I can't even, you know, get to my computer, you know, maybe once a week, Liz. Let me do, let me tell you this. When you do the first two things properly, when you show just how invested you are with your potential customer, when you become incredibly relatable by sharing those things, staying top of mind becomes much more easy. So I took 90 days off this summer consecutive. I was like, peace out. I'm out of here. But I, when I came back, I was still top of mind because I had done those two things uh, very, very well. So remember, show you're invested, share in a relatable way and stay top of mind. That's how you're going to be able to very easily climb that email staircase and go from friend to customer. I'm interrupting this episode to share an incredible networking opportunity that happens every single Monday at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Join us for Coffee Talk and meet and collaborate with other mompreneurs just like you. Networking has grown my business by leaps and bounds, and I would love to share this opportunity with you. All the details can be found in our show notes. Now back to the show. I love that. Those are such simple yet actionable items that if you take what Liz is telling you, you can literally create this email list of ready buyers by just being a human. It can be as simple or as complex as you make it out to be. So those were amazing, amazing points. And the other thing I want to touch upon too, for those of you listening that are like, okay, I just, I don't know, is it worth it? I'm spending all this time on social. Well, there's a big perk to an email list versus your social media accounts. Do you hear where I'm headed with this, Liz? Yeah. Okay. So raise your hand if you were alive in 2022 and you remember some billionaire buying a social media platform and completely imploding it. It just, it kind of imploded on itself. It now has a different name, a different logo. um, And people are leaving in droves, Mm -hmm. right? So raise your hand if you were alive. That should be everybody. Amy's got her hand raised. I've got my (laughs) hand raised. You should be raising your hand too, right? So you own your email list. You do not own the social media platform. And what we saw very very boldly in 2022 was that quite literally one person, one person can buy that social media platform and basically fire everyone or make, you know, make them quit. And then, you know, he's left holding the bag, so to speak. So we don't want that. If we, you know, if you had built your entire platform on that little bird now known as X, you might be screwed right now. You might be wondering where did my customers go? Because they certainly aren't there anymore, right? And so that is the importance of owning your email list. 
building an email list, you can take those leads, right? Because they opted in. They said, I want to hear from Amy. I want to hear from Shahara. I want to hear from Liz. And you can take them, whether you're using MailChimp today and you decide to use Active Campaign tomorrow, you can take those leads with you. You own that data, okay? So that is the number one reason why email marketing is so important. We want you to succeed and we want you to own your business, right? You don't own social media. The second thing I'll say, because it's consent-based, is email has an incredible return on investment. They say for every dollar you spend, you can get 30, 40 bucks in return. And that's correct. I see a much larger return than that when you do it correctly, when you follow that email staircase, when you set expectations of, you know, hey, this is how it's going to go down, right? You can see that return, like take that Facebook ads. I don't know about you, but still to the day, to this day, I'm seven years into business. I still can't justify the ad spend. I just can't do it. Same. <laughs> um, I can't either. Right. So I want you to keep your money. The money really truly is in your email list. And then the third thing and this might resonate the most with you, is you can make real connections. Amy is on my email list. I'm on this podcast because she said, hey, do you want to be on this podcast? I love what you're doing. I was like, oh my gosh, Amy, this is so fun. And then guess what I did? I went and I searched her and now we're buddies, right? So you make real connections. And when we follow that email staircase, when we you know, try to make friends in the inbox, we can really get to know our subscribers. Just like, you know, I know what Amy does for you, maybe I could create an email template, you know, just to get, uh, you know, to help her figure out how to get more people to click on her podcast through her email, right? I know she's a podcast host, right? Um, you know, I know Shahara on my email list is a lawyer. And, you know, she just needs to learn how to build her list, how to get people from in person then onto an email list. So I'm creating a product for that, for that, right? You can make those real connections so that when you go to sell, you know, not only do you create the right offer because you know who is on your list, you can talk about it in the right way because you know those people right off, you know, you know them so, so well. Guys, building those real connections, those real relationships, you touched upon so many incredible reasons why email marketing is so powerful. So if you're listening to this, like look at the return on your investment for your time. I mean, a lot of times I even have clients you repurposing some of the things that they're using on their email list. Turn that into your social media content then. It's okay because you don't know who is actually seeing your social media content, your emails. You can actually dive in, go into the back end and look at those analytics to see, okay, who's really interested in you and really leverage that data. And I love how you touched upon platforms too, that it doesn't have to be crazy when you first start. Start with something free because you can then move it as you grow to something that's more in depth, more you know, of a robust version of it. But there's nothing wrong with starting out with MailChimp. A lot of us have done that. There's so many cool free platforms available. Are, do you have any advice when it comes to choosing a platform when people are first starting out? So if you're struggling with a platform, here's what I want you to do. Maybe you do this with your kids when you're trying to get them to do a complicated task. <laughs> and if you don't, here's a tip for them too. I want you to get out your phone and set a 20 minute timer and then, you know, list out the ones that you've heard of, you know, MailChimp, Active Campaign, Convert Kit, whatever. Go to YouTube and, you know, start that timer. And just spend 20 minutes watching over the shoulder or review videos. I need you to see the platform and then just go with your gut. Your gut will tell you, I can afford this and this makes mostly sense, right? <laughs> because there are some really robust uh you know, email service providers or CRMs. And when you're beginning, you probably don't need all that. You might, oh, the, you know, my favorite person has a coupon code for it. And, you know, oh, I want to give them the affiliate commission or whatever. Just pick the one that makes the most sense to you, right? Yeah. I use ConvertKit. It makes sense for my brain. Uh, but some people, you know, live and die by AWeber or something like that, right? And so just set the timer. At the end of the timer, 
just make a decision. I know it's hard. You could spend a week on this. I don't want you to spend a week on this. I just want you to get emailing. So 20 minutes, go to YouTube, watch a few videos, whichever one makes the most sense for your brain, go with that one. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such good advice. And YouTube is such a wealth of knowledge to really dive in and see what the these platforms look like on the back end. So I think so many women get stuck in analysis paralysis mode. And then like we keep sitting in that indecision to avoid making the decision, but just pick one, just start. I love your, your tangible takeaway on that. So, so good. The last thing I want to touch on before we wrap up is because the landscape's changed a little bit over the past year or so. And I don't know if you've noticed this as well, but things that used to be working for opt-ins aren't converting quite like they used to. You know, now a simple like checklist doesn't seem to have the conversion rate that it used to. What advice can you give us for creating an opt-in to really get people onto our list? Okay, so I think about 10 minutes ago, I said something about the vision you have for your students. So think about the vision as, you know, if they are walking across the stage of you university and you hand them a degree, what is that degree, right? That's the vision you have for your students, your clients, customers, whatever you want to call them. For me, make money with email. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about your podcast downloads. I don't care about your social media followers. Uh, you know, I don't care about you walking your dog at night. Like all I care about is your email list and that it, you know, creates revenue for you. That's the degree I'm handing you. That's the vision I have for you at the end of our time together, right? So now we have to take it back to the first day of class, right? That's your freebie. That's your opt-in. That's your lead magnet. If I'm handing you that degree, what is the very first homework assignment? What does that first class look like? And what is that first little baby step I can get once you enroll in Liz Wilcox University, right? For me, it's an entire welcome sequence, right? It's like, hey, this is the very first thing you need to do. It's the most important thing. Uh, it's the foundation of your business with email marketing. So that's what I'm going to give you. It's already written for you, right? So think about your university. Think about what degree you are handing your students at the end. And now take it back to the first day of class. That is going to be your opt-in. And I don't care if it's a checklist, a webinar, a series, you know, then you got to think of who is enrolling and, you know, what, what would serve them best, what homework assignment would serve them best, right? So I have full-time entrepreneurs. They tend to use Google Docs. So my welcome sequence is a Google Doc they can copy. If you're working with other mo moms that, you know, maybe working moms, you know, you're not going to do a five-day challenge. <laughs> they are going to drop out on day two and then feel guilty, uh, you know, and it's like, oh, this is another thing I didn't get done. You might just have a 10-minute Spotify meditation playlist to help them feel better, right? Because that is what your students need, right? That's going to help them get going. So figure out what format works best for your ideal person, and that's going to convert no matter what the trend says. I Love it. Such great advice. Liz, this episode was just full of so much value. Seriously, you are absolutely amazing. How can we get into your world and learn all the things about you? Yeah, of course, I'm an email marketer. I'd love for you to join my list. You can go directly to LizWilcox.com. In the top right-hand corner, there's a hot pink button. You can't miss it. You're going to get that welcome sequence I talked about that's going to help guide you up the email staircase. It's going to help you start that friendship we talked about. You're also going to get three newsletter examples, one to show you how to get people to click, another how to get people to reply, and third and most importantly, how to get people to buy directly from your newsletter. And if that's not enough, I know writing from scratch totally sucks. You don't have a lot of time. I'm going to give you 52 subject lines all for free, that welcome sequence, three newsletter templates, uh, and 52 subject lines, lizwilcox.com, hot pink button. I love it. Thank you so much, Liz, for dropping that value. We will be sure to link that up in the show notes. And oh, thank you for taking time out of your crazy schedule to pour into our listeners today. 
No problem. I can't wait to see what you do with email. And until next time, Mama, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 